Hey there folks, today we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane. Some of you might recognize this as my very first Space Engineers Survival Let's Play series. In fact, this is probably one of the very first uh, Survival Let's Play series of Space Engineers on YouTube. And I just managed to recover this file, which is why I decided we should take a little look at it. For those of you who have never played the game when it was initially released in 2013, or in this case, 2014 for survival it'll give you an idea of how far the game has come and for those of you who have played the game hopefully you'll get a little bit of nostalgia out of it so as you can see right off the bat the initial asteroid designs were vastly vastly different than they are in current iterations of space engineers they had so many different types of ores and most of the asteroid was actually ore. Very little of it was actual rock. So that's one thing that's changed drastically. Also, you can see there's every single kind of ore on this one asteroid, which is something that you don't see anymore. Usually you'll only find one or two different types of ore at most on a single asteroid. Maybe three if there's something in the core, but that's about it. And... First off, this is the very first base that we made. It was solar powered for the most part. There was a reactor on the inside. And we used rotors. When rotors were first introduced, we used the rotors to kind of rotate the solar panels to face the sun, which was a unique thing because back, back then it was either uh, 90 degrees this way, 90 degrees that way, or that way. And adding rotors let you get 100% uh, utilization of your solar panels which was not always the case and we'll take a look at that in a little bit some of you might recognize that anyhow let's head in to the very first base that we built and as you can see there are no conveyors or connectors because they were not introduced into the game yet they were just cargo containers which for some reason were placed upside down and I'm not sure if that's a bug from the years of uh, Space Engineers updates, or if that was actually built like that, I don't recall. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we have some assemblers, refineries, and cargo containers, and that's about all we had for blocks other than nuclear reactors and gravity generators, and we basically used all the blocks that we had to build this. And although it was very simple, or although it is very simple now, it was not very simple back then. And Heading up here, Energy heads up to the flight deck. We'll take a look at that in a little bit, but uh, let's first continue on with the base. This was built back when, really, there weren't many blocks, so <laughs> this was the extent of our control station. And one thing that you definitely did need back in the day was you needed medical bays because it was really the only way to power up your suit. Uh, so we built two medical facilities and we used it to power up our suit you couldn't do it in control stations like you can now all right um actually let's finish our tour of the base there's not much left just a little bit of windows for natural light and uh yeah a couple doors air tightness was not a thing because that was uh just a pipe dream at the time so nothing was built with air tightness in mind and here up top we have our flight deck we have this little mechanoid thing that uh, didn't really work worth a darn, so <laughs> it just sat here in a heap. There used to be a cockpit on top of here, on top of that rotor, and that's where you could kind of sort of control it, but although novel, it never really worked. Uh, I was just trying to use the rotors to the best extent, and nope, <laughs> that was a lot harder than, uh, harder than I thought. That didn't work. However, when wheels were introduced into the game, we decided to make a rover. Although there were no planets at the time, we decided to make a rover nonetheless. Uh-oh, running out of energy. Fuel critical. So, before I was saying... When wheels were first introduced to the game, we built a buggy, although there were no planets in the game yet. That was quite a ways off yet. Um, we still did have wheels, so we decided to build a buggy. You could still drive it around the asteroid if there was enough gravity from our gravity generators, which we did. And this was our, I think it was one of our very first small ships that we built. And it was just basically something with an ore detector and some lights and enough engines to get us going. And it worked. It's very ugly, but it worked. 
And then we had some Gatling turrets and whatnot to protect us from meteors, which were in the game eventually. In fact, meteors were the cause of this ship having to get the front end rebuilt. But we'll take a look at the ships now. We have them all lined up from the last episode that we ever did from this series. So let's go down the line and take a look. So let's start off with this ship. This was the very first survival pod in the game. Uh, the front of the ship ended up getting blown off by an asteroid, but we ended up rebuilding it and a little better, although the front end might look a little weird. It was a uh, better design because there was more room on the inside. And if you head on the inside, this is what the original survival pods looked like. Um, they had everything that you need and nothing that you don't, just like a normal survival pod, but we did add some skylight to it. And this was one of our very first large ship designs. This was a cargo carrier. And one thing that I noticed is that this ship looks very similar to the survival pods that we can get in the survival, in Space Engineers Survival today. Although they don't have the massive cargo containers on the side. They do have the same open mid-deck design with the cockpit up front and engineering in the back. And I really do like this design because it works quite well. And I guess we can head on in. There's nothing really to see. Eventually we did add a conveyor once conveyors were added into the game. However, this ship was built without conveyors in mind, I believe. Yeah, this was built completely without conveyors in mind because they weren't a thing when it was built. But that was added eventually. All right. Moving on, we have this. This was actually a later design mining ship. It was built before connectors were in the game, but it was built with conveyors in mind. As you can see, we have cargo containers and whatnot connected to our mining ship. And here we have the original uh, way of transferring mining supplies, which was ejectors and collectors, which are still in the game, but they're very, very rarely used. However, when connectors were not in the game, that's the way we transferred mining goods from the cargo containers to our mining bases, was with ejectors. And we'll take a look at the receiving end of these ejectors in a little bit, but uh, this was built before connectors were a thing, and it still works quite well, I might add. Moving on down the line, we have, this was actually a later design ship that was built when batteries were added in. This was, I think, our first ship that did not have a reactor on board. It basically just has a bunch of batteries, a cargo cont container, actually, no, there are some reactors. I think we added those later because the solar panels just didn't charge it up enough. But this was essentially meant to be mostly a battery-powered ship for flying around. All right, and this particular ship is one of the later design welder ships that we had. As you can see, it has cameras, has pistons, and connectors. And we used this to build quite a few things. In fact, we used it to build the Herpter Prize over there, that hideous, disgusting looking ship that we never finished. Thank the Lord. And I'm not sure what we had the sensors for. I'm not sure what they were used for in this particular ship, but they were used for something. And moving on, we have a small welder ship over here. This welder ship actually mates up with the tug that we're going to take a look at a little bit down the line, but this is basically the front of a welder ship. It has all the welding supplies and the cargo containers and whatnot, and you can technically you can technically fly it, however, it has not nearly enough thrust to do anything meaningful. But that's because it connects up with the ship that's further down the line. This is our very first large attack ship. Um, I was actually really proud of it at the time, but uh, now that I look back on it, it's <laughs> not that great at all. In fact, it uh, actually still has some battle scars from, I believe, a ship over there that we captured. And this is a later design ship. However, I didn't really utilize the uh, connectors completely in 
a more modern ship, I'd probably have the reactor or the backup reactors and cargo containers connected to the uh, a conveyor system, but didn't have that. And this is the bridge up here, heading down back here. We have these are just some backups, and then back here are, is the main engineering section. And yeah, I don't think any of this is really connected via or all any of these reactors are connected via the conveyor system. One thing that you'll notice is that there's not much uranium in any of these, and that's because back in the day, uranium lasted so much longer. Like, this amount of uranium in each one of these reactors would probably be enough to make this ship last an entire day. But, alas, no longer. Let's take a look uh, at some of our other ships. This is a later design ship. This is actually very similar to what you would see in modern day space engineers where you have cameras and remote controls. This is basically a drone. 100% of what you need for a drone and nothing more, nothing less. This is a simple mining drone. Here we have a simple attack drone. I actually like these designs quite a bit. Quite a bit. And here is our first welding ship that we made. Um, one thing that you'll notice is there's a gaping hole here because there was a cargo container, but Clang blew it up. And here is a large welding ship. Actually, it's a large welding drone. I believe this was one of our only large drones that we had. And here we have a grinding ship, and then here we have a mining ship. It's actually more than just a mining ship. We'll take a look at it in a little bit. Uh, this is a relatively old design ship. I don't believe it has any connectors, any conveyors, except for the grinders, just enough to get everything into the cargo container. But there were no connectors back when this ship was made, so how did we get stuff in and out? Well, <laughs> through the door. <laughs> And uh, this ship does have an interior, although not much, uh, because back in the day, the only way to get energy was to uh, use the medical facility. We actually put a little medical room in here to uh, have quick access to electricity for your suit anytime that you needed it, because you could be sitting in this all day long and your suit power would still drain. So that's why you'll see a lot of the ships that we have, large ships I should say, have medical rooms in them. All right, and heading inside here, this is a later design ship that has connectors and basically everything that you want in a ship. This is a large mining ship that we use to get a vast quantity of resources for the Herpter Prize. And there's actually a relatively nice interior to this ship, too. And it has backup cameras and everything. But, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, amenities that are not in here that you would find in a normal ship. But, one thing that I really should have done but didn't do, I'm actually not sure if, if you could have done it back in the day, was connect the nuclear reactors to the conveyor system. I'm not sure if they worked. I, they may have been bugged at the time where they didn't really uh, transfer stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but for whatever reason, we didn't hook the nuclear reactors up to the conveyor system. But this was an all-in-one mining, refining, and assembling facility that would uh, store everything in large cargo containers. And it was actually really nice. I really did like this ship. Uh, it's one of the last designs I believe we actually made on this server before moving, or not this server, but this particular world before moving to the um, survival exploration world. And then here we have the space tug. I really do like this design. It's a cool idea for a ship, which is basically you have a merge block and then a really powerful ship on the other end that has a bunch of thrusters and gyroscopes and whatnot. Fuel critical. And it'd be able to tug, well, one of these, which uh, is basically just, uh, I think these are medium cargo containers, and the collectors, which uh, we use to transport goods 
from the mining base and the rave cave, which is over there, to our main base and our building base, which is over here. And this particular tug was also made it up to the welder way over here. So that ship would made up to this and that would make this welder ship a lot more maneuverable. So that was the idea behind that. And I think I had a, another ship that would utilize the tug as well, but I don't know where it went. Maybe it got disappeared somewhere. And here we have a small attack craft. I don't think we really ever used it to great extent. Um, as you'll notice, there's some stuff missing. In fact, there's stuff missing in the Herp Deprise as well because uh, to get this world to load, uh, I had to deactivate all of the mods, including the additional blocks that we had because the mods were corrupting the world and I was, for the longest time, I couldn't access this world. But uh, after deactivating the mods, I was able to get this world working. So... I would take a look, well, I guess we can take a look inside the Herp Deprised, but this was going to be our grand flagship, but I kind of called it quits because it looked disgusting, is one way to put it. <laughs> uh, I think my design philosophy has improved, although I'm still not the greatest at designing ships, I certainly am not this bad anymore. But inside here is just... Uh, I think we finished the front of the ship pretty well, but it, it was using conveyor systems and everything. This was uh, one of the more recent designs, if recent is probably like 2015, <laughs> but there's not much in here. If we head up here, we'll get to the uh, first like main bridge, I guess you could say. This is the uh, CIC in here, which is really well protected. Up here you have the secondary bridge, I believe. Nope, not up there. Ah, on the other side here, there's a secondary bridge. Takes a little bit to get to. Um, yep, here. This is the secondary bridge, or the, the forward-looking bridge. And it also looks out over the hangar bay. Although the idea for this ship was cool, it was never executed very well. If I were to do this again, I'd have many, many improvements to it. Maybe someday, but not right now. And this is just, um, this was going to be a staircase up to all the different levels of the hangar, which was quite vast. There were th three decks on the hangar on each side. But uh, this would definitely not work in a multiplayer server. Far too many blocks would definitely lag the thing out. And this was our engineering section, which was taking full usage of the conveyors and the conveying system. And this basically just goes on for a ways. There's nothing much in here. And just keep on going back. And then I guess there is one last thing to take a look at. There is a sub deck down here where we can access some of the gun ports which were on the bottom. A lot of the gun ports were never actually finished, but yeah, there were little gun ports like this on the bottom of the ship. And I believe they were also on the top of the ship, or they were planned to be on the top of the ship. Never quite built yet, though. All right, so yeah, that is uh, the Herp Deprise. We could go all the way to the back, and yes, up top there is a, another flight deck but I don't think I ever completely finished that. Like, how do I get down, actually? Oh, it's just... Okay. I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've even been in this thing. Although the visibility out of here is good, man, oh man, would you get wrecked <laughs> if, uh, if you uh, encountered a modern space engineer's ship. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, that is that. One ship that we didn't take a look at, we'll take a look at last... But one thing that we did skip over was Space Jesus. Yes, uh, the original Space Jesus. We did build a chapel to Space Jesus. And inside here is just a little viewing gallery. And we did give Space Jesus a, an offering. And I'm not really sure what the offering was. Critical. Ah, we gave him 
10,000 gold as an offering to fend off Clang, but uh, I don't know. Clang is still pretty formidable. I don't think it worked. All right, let's uh, take a look. Over here we have... We were going to build a secret base in there. Never really got around to doing it. There's just uh, some blocks that were really never finished. But in here is our first mining base. And we actually did do quite a bit with this. So here we have the mining base. Uh, conveyors and connectors were in the game at the time. However, I'm sorry, connectors were not in the game at the time. Uh, just collectors and ejectors were. Eventually connectors were added and we did add a connector, but this is how we got most of our ores was through this right here. And we would just uh, fly our ship over, the ejectors would open, drop the ores in here, and uh, yeah, that's how we did it. One thing that you'll notice is there are basic refineries here. And that's because back in the day, while there weren't basic refineries, we had arc furnaces and these were arc furnaces however when this game or when this world got transmutated transported over into the newer version of space engineers all of the arc furnaces got turned into basic refineries so that's why there are basic refineries there but yes this was the main area for mining and not necessarily assembling but definitely mining and there's our little control station for it and back in here is the Rave Cave. It doesn't look nearly as good in DirectX 11, but in DirectX 9, man oh man, was this Rave Cave the raviest. Alright, and that's about it. There's one other thing we can take a look at out here before we take a look at the last ship. And where, oh where is it hiding? Um, there it is. This is a ship that we managed to snag with the gunship that we had. This was one of the original ships that would spawn in and you could capture it. I really do like the design of these older ships that space engineers had that you could capture. It's uh, really quite cool. Like there were uh, hangar doors here but this one got all blown off. And on the inside here, there's an absolutely massive amount of storage. There's, what, six, twelve different cargo containers and assemblers and refineries. This was an absolutely fantastic ship to capture. But, uh, alas, the ships that you capture nowadays are, although cool, not nearly as cool as this. In my opinion, at least. All right, heading up here, we can head to the bridge of this ship. I remember I was kind of frustrated <laughs> because it, it took so long to get up to this sh the bridge of this ship that I just decided to uh, grind a hole in here and put a door. But, yep, that would be one of the old, I believe this was like a mining, refining cargo ship that you could get. And yeah, that is that. There's only one other thing that we can take a look at. And that is, heading on over here, is, I believe, the Spectre, which is the last ship that we have not taken a look at. It's that one right there. This is the ship we actually ended up taking with us when we did our Space Engineers Exploration Series, because they had added jump drives into the game, which was really something fantastical and interesting and as you can see still no air tightness in this ship although I did put airlocks there is no air tightness in the ship and again we have some drones that we brought with us with a hangar bay and a piston activated hangar door because the actual hangar doors were not in the game yet and our engineering section is fully connected together as you would expect it to be and no arc furnaces, but we do have some basic refinery, regular refinery and assemblers, and cargo container. Let's see what we have in our ship. And as you can see, almost no uranium. But, uh, again, it would last a long time, but... Nope. Not anymore. And 
Energy low. One thing that I'm failing to see is actually, you know what? I think this save was made before the jump drive was added into the game. So there is no actual jump drive in here yet, but the jump drive would have been in there. So you know what? I think that'll be it for this little throwback episode. I hope some of you got a little bit of nostalgia from seeing original Space Engineers Survival, and for those of you who have never seen what the original Space Engineers Survival gameplay was like, I uh, hope you guys got a little bit of a look. So that'll be it for this episode.